so we can rewind back to 2004, and I was an analyst at a hedge fund in Boston. And my, uh, my aunt and uncle and their children, my cousins, were visiting me from New Orleans. It was right after my wedding. I got married in New Jersey, went back to Boston, and they were visiting me, and, my, and, and the oldest of their children, Nadia, she was 12 years old. And uh, it was 4th of July weekend in Boston. I don't know if, y all, if any of y'all have been to Boston. They have a nice four, uh, kind of 4th of July fireworks thing over the uh, Charles River. And I, and I distinctly remember, while we were waiting for the fireworks to start, uh, it, I, I was just killing time by giving my family brain teasers. Uh, the, the kind of brain teasers, you know, the, a good interview question at Google or, you know, whatever. Uh, and and I, I don't know if you've ever done this with, with your family, but some people say, oh, I don't care, well, I, I don't want to think right now, and, and all the rest. But uh, I, I distinctly remember Nadia being one, you know, she's 12 years old, she's like, well, don't tell me the answer. I can figure it out. You know, can they see each other? You know, what other say? She, she was trying, at, at 12 years old, she was tackling these brain teasers as well as, I, you know, any, any 25 year old computer science grad that I'd ever, that I'd ever interviewed before. Uh, so, so I remember the next day we were, we were touring the colleges and, and we went to MIT and I remember telling uh, Nadia, I was like, you, you should, you know, I'm pretty impressed by how well you tackled a lot of those brain teasers yesterday. You should, you should think about, you should think about MIT. And I remember right when I said that, my aunt gave a little look to my uncle. And, and I wasn't sure what that look was about. Maybe it was something else, completely unrelated. Uh, but, but, uh, you know, but I remember that look, and, and the, the very next morning, my, my aunt, Nusrath auntie, told me, um, you know, Sal, thank you so much for believing in Nadia. It really means a lot. You're like a, a big brother to, to my children and, and a role model. But I, I thought I would let you know that Nadia is actually having trouble in math, that she's gotten great grades. She's a straight-A student, but she just took a placement exam. And she did not place into the, the, the kind of the standard track where you would take algebra in eighth grade and so on and so forth. She got placed into a slower track. And so uh, I said, that, that's impossible. Uh, you know, there, she, she was tackling stuff way more abstract and deep and, and thought provoking two nights ago than, I could, than anything that you could imagine covered in a sixth or seventh grade math class. So when Nadia woke up, I said, hey, Nadia, I have trouble believing this. What, 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 do you, what did you not understand? Why do you think you didn't do well in the placement exam? And I said it was units, uh, you know, converting kilograms to, to grams and, and all of the rest. And I said, Nadia, I'm 100% you can, you can tackle that. So what do you say when you go back to New Orleans and, and I stay in Boston, after my work and after your school, I tutor you. We do something over speakerphone. We'll figure out a way to be able to see what each other, what, what, what we're writing and all that. And we ended up using Yahoo Doodle and we started doing this. And uh, it, it was kind of fun for me. I mean, you know, e even while I was at the hedge fund, I always have this, uh, you know, wh when anyone works at, at, a, at a hedge fund, you kind of have a rationale for, for why you're doing it. Um, <laughs> although I do, I do have a, an argument of how it actually does contribute to society, but it, that, that would take me longer than this talk. Uh, the, but, but I used to tell my friends, I want to do this job long enough so that I could save enough money that I could start a school on my own terms. That was always something that was a little bit in the back of my mind. I didn't really have a sense of what that would mean, but it was kind of like this life ambition for me. Uh, and, and so it was fun for me to tutor my cousin because I was like, hey, I can start to warm up. I can start to, to work, work and, and help my cousins in the process. And the first month was difficult. I remember with Nadia, it was like, you know, X plus three is equal to 10. Oh, what is X? And she, you know, her answers were always like seven. Or I'd say, if you have two kilometers, how many meters? And, and she would she'd say two thousand. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> and uh, and it was it was this thing that she was a smart girl, but she she had just had no confidence. She she anything outside of math, her brain was engaged. As soon as she got a, a kind of a formal math problem, it's like she didn't want to think. And. Uh, so, so uh, there's a couple of things that I had done early on in that. And I don't talk a lot about this because the videos are what Khan Academy is, is most, got most known for. Is uh, very early on, I was like, I want to make something for Nadia so that I can make sure she has 100% proficiency of the core stuff. So that she doesn't answer every question with, a, with another question. Uh, so, so I wrote this little thing, this little you know, JavaScript question generator for her. Um, that will literally give her as many uh, units problems as necessary until she should get 10 in a row. Or as many uh, you know, basic algebra or exponents or whatever, any of these core skills. And then you know, every, every, uh, the next day in our tutoring session I'd say, well did you do the problems? And, and, and she'd say, oh yeah, yeah I did them I and I didn't really believe her. So I, I put a database behind it. Uh, to, to, uh, 
to, to, so I could keep track of when she did the problems, how, how, many, how much time was it taking her and all the rest. Very simple stuff at this point. And then I started making one module after another. And, 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 I mean, this was literally like a dedicated software effort for one 12-year-old uh, at, at the time. <laughs> Uh, but, but she eventually did progress uh, through the, the, the tutoring and, and the software, which had no, you know, the, the videos aren't even on the radar at this point. Then I started to tutor her, younger brothers, uh, more and more family members. It was kind of this, this fun thing. I mean, sometimes when I'd call up a distant relative, I was like, can I tutor your kids? They thought that there was some type of strange catch to it. But uh, they're, they're, uh, they're like, Sal must not be doing well in this hedge fund thing. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> Uh, but but you fast forward now to 2006. I had this, this like cohort of like 20 or 30 kids around the country, that in different time zones. I still had a day job, and, and I would come home and I'd try to tutor them all and, and, and do these sessions. I would try to do these uh, conference calls with more than one student. That got that got tricky, and I would I vented at a, at, a, at a dinner party, and and one of my buddies Zuli says, you know, why don't you just why don't you just record some of your lectures on YouTube? And I said, no. Not YouTube, that's for dogs on skateboards. That's, that's not for serious mathematics. Um, but, but then, you know, I kind of went home and once I got over the idea that it wasn't my idea, uh, I, 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 decided, I decided to give it a shot. And uh, I, I put those first YouTube videos up there. Uh, I think it was greatest common divisor or least common multiple. Uh, and I, I started doing a bunch of them, 20 or 30, the same stuff that I was covering with my cousins at the time. And, and a couple of things happened, and you know, I, I joke about this a lot, but it's absolutely true. The first feedback I got from my cousins was that they liked me better on YouTube than in person. <laughs> and uh, and I'm, I'm hoping it's only in an, kind of an education tutorial context, but it, it actually makes a lot of sense. They could pause, they could repeat. There's a lot to be said about human interaction. There's a lot to be said about kind of human mentorship. And I think they value that. They value the fact that their cousin, who was in Boston, who had a job, who was married, took the time out of his day to care about their lives. They definitely, that definitely was a, was a positive for them. But I can tell just from my interactions that the actual tutoring session was super stressful. When, when, you know, no one wants to say that they don't understand. No one wants to, their, their cousin to feel like, oh, maybe you know, Nadia isn't worth the time, or maybe I'm, she's wasting my time. And so all of a sudden they could do it in a de-stressed environment. And then when we had our live sessions, it was just really for, really for questions. The, the other thing that happened is uh, I started getting letters from people. I just randomly put it on YouTube. You know, I, I remember that first time YouTube says, do you want to make these private or public? I was like, I don't care, public. And, uh, and other people started to watch. At first I was suspicious, because you know, I, I told four cousins to watch the video, and like six people would watch it. And I was like, who are these two people that are watching my videos? Uh, and uh, I don't know if you ever saw Julia and Julia, where she wrote a blog, and she keeps refreshing it to see if people are watching. That was me in 2006. And, uh, but then all of a sudden, it, it became clear that definitely people who I, who I, weren't, who I wasn't related to were watching the videos. And then they started to comment. They started to say thank you, uh, or which that by itself is huge because I don't know if you've seen most of the comments on YouTube. They're, they're not. They're not all G-rated. No. Uh, so so. And frankly, I think even if I was a physical teacher, just to get a thank you from a student every now and then, that's a pretty powerful idea. And so I would start getting these thank yous. But then the the, the comments would be like. I was going to flunk algebra and now I'm the top student in algebra because I watched those four videos. And I was like, my God, I was sleeping or taking a nap or shaving or something and, and this person was able to learn algebra. That's a pretty profound idea. And so you can imagine, I just got excited and I just, I just kept going. Um, when I started off, I, I, I didn't think this was, you know, th th there was something in my head that says this is a neat idea. I can make that video on least common multiple once and it's there forever and my cousins can use it, and even if no one else uses it, it's kind of a nice little thing for the family. Maybe my grandkids could eventually use it, or my great-great-grandkids. It would kind of be like this neat thing. And maybe, maybe in the future other people might, might actually want it. So I just kept going, and, uh, and actually I was building out the software at the same time, until you, you, you fast forward to, uh, and then the software is funny because I, I made all of these modules, and then I, as you can tell, a lot of this has come out of being lazy. Uh, I, 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 I uh, I, I got tired of assigning the modules to my cousins. I was like, because before I was like, okay, uh, Nadia, now that you've got 10 in a row on this, you're now ready for this module. Now that you've got 10 in a row on negative numbers, you're now ready for fractions. And that got tiring for me, so I set them up in this kind of graph structure, and so it would automatically assign them. Once you've got 10 in a row on this, you're now ready for these modules. Once you get 10 in a row on those, you're now ready for those modules. And uh, I said, well, yeah, this is kind of a neat graph structure. I had it visually displayed for myself so I could keep track of all these modules. I said, let me, let me have my cousins look at them. 
And so they, once again, they liked that, that they could see where they were going and what they needed to do to understand, to eventually get to trigonometry or eventually get to geometry or whatever. Uh, so uh, I, I had that out there, and this is another probably thing not to do if you're trying to, and I wasn't trying to start a business or a not-for-profit at this point, but that software alone got so popular by 2007 that it was taking down my $50 a month web hosting. And uh, you know, my, my brilliant entrepreneurial mind said, oh, then I'll just turn it off. Instead, <laughs> instead of paying $100 a month. Uh, so so uh, that happened, the video traffic kept growing, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, uh, until you fast forward to uh, 2008, and then some, some interesting, even across this, some interesting things started to happen. I started getting letters from teachers. Because once again, I thought this is just for my cousins, you know, whatever. But teachers started saying, you already gave the lecture on, on, on adding fractions. I don't have to give the lecture anymore. So now I'm assigning these for my students, and then I use my lecture, my class time, the teacher's class time, to actually interact with my students, to actually kind of flip the classroom. So now the students can do homework and, while they're in the room and, uh, and, 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 and get the lecture at home at their own pace and get all the benefits that my cousins had, you know, the reason why they liked them to begin with. And so you fast forward to 2009, and this whole thing just got kind of too exciting. And uh, I had trouble uh, focused on focusing on generating alpha in my day job. <laughs> and, and so, uh, and, and you know, this is probably the fourth iteration where I kind of was tempted to quit my job. Uh, you know, the, the, the previous three, we kind of looked at our finances and says, no, we can't. Uh, but, but by the fourth, we're like, you know, it wouldn't be completely ridiculous to try this out for a year. And my rationale was, at this point, I was like, there is something here because you know at this point I was getting hundreds of letters a day and these were not letters of someone saying oh this was nice to have this helped me review for an exam some of these letters were like this is the reason why I could go to college or this is the only reason why I'm able to pass class X Y or Z and so I was like there's something here I made the decision to make it a not-for-profit just because really I wanted many, as many people as possible to use it and uh, and so I was thinking you know there's so much worry about education right now, I, let me just keep doing it, and I took the most naive approach to starting a not-for-profit, or really starting a business, I, I just kept making videos and hoping someone would notice.